It makes total sense that if you're going to start learning a new skill, you may as well start out learning the best tool for the job so that you don't have to relearn things later on down the road. When it comes to 3D graphics, there are only a few main options that everybody uses, and there's a ton of articles and videos online comparing them all and seeing which one's best. While I think that's really helpful for experts especially who already know what specific features they need, I think that can be a little overwhelming for beginners, and often the way that they're presented answers a fundamentally different question than what you should start learning. I'm Jonathan Lampel with cgcookie.com, and today let's take a look at why Blender is pretty much always going to be the best first tool to learn when you're learning computer graphics. The first is that it's the easiest to learn. This may not have happened to you, but I'm sure you at least know a few people who have spent a lot of time and money working towards a degree or to get a particular job, only to find out when they finally get there that it's not what they were expecting. Maybe the idea of it was super enticing, but the day-to-day -day reality is so different from what they actually wanted that they end up jumping ship and starting something completely new all over from scratch, or they end up just kind of staying in it while kind of hating it because of the sunk cost. To some degree, that happens to everybody. That's just part of learning more about yourself and what you want to do in the world, and that's never a waste. At the same time, though, you can save yourself a lot of time and money and not to mention headache by learning the day-to-day -day reality of something before you invest too heavily in it. 3D software can be incredibly expensive, and it's all going to have a pretty steep learning curve no matter which one you choose. So by starting out with the one that's both free and fastest to learn, you'll be able to much more quickly find out if 3D is something you want to continue pursuing. Blender is also the most fun to learn, and of course that's subjective, but I don't think it should be understated because it's just so easy to mess with physics or apply weird particle systems or just mess around with sculpt brushes and all these different cool tools that along the way, you don't lose the magic of how cool what you're doing really is. Number two is everybody's got your back. One of the main reasons that Blender is the easiest to learn is because it has the biggest and most helpful community. One of the main byproducts of the fact that Blender is just super accessible is the sheer volume of help that you can find online. There are high quality tutorials everywhere, there are lots of forums you can ask questions on, and there's a ton of places where you can download rigs and scripts and pre-made assets. So if you just want to smash something together really quickly and make it look cool without learning every single step of the process just yet, you can find those online and get something pretty cool out the door pretty quickly. Number three is that it opens up your options. By now, Blender is a pretty standard tool for small teams and indie studios and freelance artists. So obviously there's a lot that you can do with it. But let's say that you want to work for a big studio that you know is going to be using Houdini or Maya or ZBrush or any one of these other tools. Does it still make sense to learn Blender when you know that's not what people at your dream job are using? Actually, I think so, for two reasons. The first is that Blender is incredibly small and fast. Last I checked, the download for it is under 130 megabytes. And because there's no licensing concerns here, you can just run the EXE from a thumb drive if you want to. That portability means you can take it with you anywhere. Here's why that matters. No 3D program is 100% stellar at everything. Each has their own unique strengths and weaknesses. So by having an alternative literally in your back pocket that you can use at any time, can really save your butt. If you're facing a short deadline, you can just export over to Blender, fix something, export it back to your main program, and you'll be good to go. Having more tools at your disposal will never be a bad thing. Learning to use your first 3D software is kind of like learning your first programming language or learning how to paint or draw for the first time. The fundamental skills and concepts that you're going to learn will serve you throughout, even if later on you decide you want to jump to something new. It's not like all of those ideas are suddenly out the window. You'll bring that experience with you into the new software. Of course, it may have a different paradigm or a different way of doing things, but the core concepts of what makes a quality model or what makes a quality animation are remarkably consistent throughout all 3D programs. So if you get to the level where you can make quality work in Blender, you'll be able to pick up a new tool pretty quickly. Number four is that Blender lets you create concepts really fast. If there's one thing Blender crushes the competition on, it's getting ideas from your head and into 3D space as quickly as possible. The modeling workflow is blazing fast. There's been a lot of cool sculpting speedups recently. And of course, Eevee lets you render things out looking really good in real time. And the grease pencil lets you just draw and sketch right in 3D space. So you can get your ideas just onto objects or just in 3D space super fast, and that's not to mention all the add-ons and scripts and presets that you can use that speed things up even more. That makes Blender an absolute powerhouse at letting you fail fast. I'm sure you've heard that mantra before, but it's just the idea that the faster that you can iterate on your ideas and concepts, the faster that you can produce truly excellent stuff. 
And so by using a software like Blender that's focused on letting you get stuff on paper as quickly as possible, you'll be able to improve yourself as an artist faster. Once you've learned the tools and can consistently make good looking renders, but constantly find yourself hitting a roadblock or a technical limitation in Blender, then that's the best time to seek out a different software that's really good at that specific thing and learn that too. For texturing, that might be Substance or Mari. For sculpting, that would be ZBrush. Or for procedural modeling and simulations, that would be Houdini. But to be honest, I see a lot of beginners think that they've hit some sort of technical limitation when really what they have is a workflow issue or a misunderstanding of the fundamentals. So by starting out just creating art with the things that all 3D programs share, you'll be able to focus more on what's going to make you a good artist no matter what program you use. The last reason is that Blender is completely free. And I know you saw this coming a billion miles away, but I don't just mean free to download. A lot of software has educational versions that you can find for free online, but they often come with limitations and you can't use them for commercial use. Remember that thing about failing faster? Well, that's not just true of concepts, it's also true of production in general. Because Blender is completely open source, you can use it for freelance work or contract jobs as soon as you want. Getting that experience as soon as you can rather than waiting until you feel like you're good enough to get the subscriptions and start paying the licenses will really help you in the long run. I did plenty of small, odd freelance jobs as a student well before I had any right to call myself a professional 3D artist, and that forced me to get better. You'd be amazed at how much stuff you can suddenly figure out when you're on a deadline and the other alternative is just not getting paid. Now, whether you're learning Maya for school or using ZBrush for work, you cannot use those for personal and freelance projects on the side without paying full price. That's either going to be a lot of upfront investment for a pretty small short-term return, and you just kind of have to hope it works out in the long run and that you use it enough to justify that, or you just forfeit that experience completely, or you're breaking the law, and none of those are very good options. If you already know Blender though, those are just never concerns. For all those reasons, I think Blender is the best software for you to start learning 3D. I have one big caveat though, and that's that I make my living teaching Blender, so obviously I'm biased. So if there's anything that I said that you disagree with, let me know in the comments below, and that way the next person who watches this video can scroll down and get a more well-rounded perspective. Of course, I wouldn't be teaching Blender in the first place if I didn't actually think it was the most helpful. So if you want to get up to speed on Blender as quickly as possible, head over to cgcookie.com and check out our fundamentals courses, or some of our more advanced ones if you're a bit beyond that. Like I mentioned earlier, there's a ton of free and really high quality tutorials out there for Blender, and I'd really encourage you to watch them. Just be careful of getting stuck in that infinite loop where at a certain point, the amount of videos watched and the amount learned from each one kind of widens a bit. That's why at CG Cookie, we try to work ourselves out of a job, at least for each individual person going through our courses, so that by the time you're done, you'll be able to make whatever you want on your own with confidence and not need to watch tutorials. The main point of this video though is regardless of how you decide to learn Blender, just go download it and give it a shot. I promise you'll be glad that you did. Hey, thanks for watching and sticking around all the way to the end. If you like this video, go ahead and, well, like the video. And if you want to see more, go ahead and click subscribe. That way, I'll see you in the next one. Peace. These trucks are so loud. Okay. There's an airplane. Regardless of how you... Why are there helicopters? Okay, we're helicopterless for now. Let's continue on.